talk to you about Kenny McCabe, uh, a New York City cop who uh, was such a good cop that, uh, well, he got to put the cuffs on everybody when they arrested everybody because, well, the story goes his father was not such a great cop and he was trying to fight that legacy and his son was concerned about that. So we're going to talk about his son's involvement with Pete and uh, how Pete straightened out that Kenny McCabe was a good cop. Now, just so we are talking about the same thing, Kenny McCabe was the cop that uh, Joe Wenling said, uh, went to Nino Gadji and said he was going to murder all of the guys if somebody you know, came at the cops and get medals for it. I, I, yeah, I pose or posit that it was Kenny McCabe who said that, and I think he said it to Roy DeMeo, not uh, Nino Gaggi, uh, and I think he said it specifically about Pete, but you know, Kenny likes to uh, just talk and make himself sound really, really good, uh, and most of what he says, most people would disagree with, like he was the guy who took care of Son of Sam and all those other great things that Joe Wendling tries to turn, take credit for, except for the fact that he's tried to kill Pete, uh, you know, trying to came at him, and, or at least intimidate him. Anyway, Kenny McCabe was a good cop, right? So we're gonna straighten out the way that Joe Wenling has tainted his image by saying he threatened to, to kill mobsters instead of doing his job, which is what he was all about, doing his job, okay? And Pete's about to attest to that tonight. He was uh, organized crime task force. He worked okay. for all, all the prosecutors and stuff like that. Oh, okay, great. So this guy, was about six foot four, probably about 300 pounds. This guy was so obsessed with us. He made it his lifetime job. Even after work, he worked unbelievable hours, even when he wasn't getting paid. And I found out later why, you know, not only because what he thought of us, but because in his family, his father was an officer. But right. his father, his father, Back then in the days, you know, they used to call them bag men, you know? Right. Pick up the money from the guys and distribute amongst, uh, you know, the troops, you know, to keep everything calm and quiet in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? And uh, like I said, it, you know, he had a son. And uh, years later, he had passed away without my knowledge, you know, Kenny. And uh, I'm in, I'm in through my time and uh, I get a letter in now, right? And I'm trying to figure out what the hell this letter's about. Then I realized at the end, he signed, you know, McCabe. And uh, I said, oh, my God. Later did I find out that my son used to always go over to his house, hang out, you know, because it was a small neighborhood, you know, where we lived. And uh, they were very close friends. Well, I mean, without my knowledge, you didn't know that my son was hanging out at Kenny McCabe's house, you know what I mean? <laughs> and and, uh, and he wrote me, he said, listen, he explained to me he knew my sons and they were good friends and they always go at his house. <clears throat> and he, he, went, he says, you know, I, I feel you're a pretty sincere guy when it comes to certain things. He says, so I, he, he asked me about his father and I wrote back. I said, listen, I really don't know too much about him. What I do know about him, he was a cop's cop, which means to me is like, he's dedicated, he's hardworking and he'll do whatever he's got to do to put bad guys away. And that time I told him, I said, you consider those bad guys. And uh, I used to phone with your father. You know, I told him, I said, you know, I used to see him on a steak out by the house, back of ass, we want to call or anything like that. You know, and uh, he, uh, I said, but you know, oh, your, father, your, your father was a good man. Now don't ask me about your grandfather. So eventually, this is the guy that got to put the handcuff on Paul Castellano. They, because he was so, he worked so hard and diligent at his job that he got the honor actually coupling well, Mr. Castellano at the time, you know. But now I'm, I'm doing my time, you know. It was, wait, that Pete, it was Pete, Pete. not Campagnolo, it was Pete, uh, Pete Coppola, right? The cop? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big boy. You know what? So like I was saying, I got this letter from his son asking me about his father, and he, and he felt in his heart, he said that I would tell him the truth, the true story about what I thought of his father. And I did. I told him your father was a cop's cop, which to me means uh, dedicated to his job, no matter what. He, when he, even when he's off the, off the clock, he's still on the clock. And uh, 
I see that. I don't know what you want to say about your father, but you know, me and him had like a, a, a weird relationship. You know, I see him in the morning down by the club, and then I see him at night when I was over home. And, um, I used to joke with him. I said, you know, he had to get a different car. We used to do his undercover work. We should six foot four, 300 pounds. You can't be in that Volkswagen Beetle. You're a dead pin. I go, oh, shit. I said, if you had to get out of that car, how fast can you get out? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, I, I, like I said, I'd ask if you want to call up. He was cold, cold, right? This, this guy gave a shit about nothing except getting us, you know? Uh, he hated Freddie the name. Well, he had a uh, great passion, man. Oh, God. So, uh, you know, like I said, and I, so I wrote this, this his song back, and, you know, he wrote me back. We corresponded a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look for them letters. She make a point. They, make they would be great. We'd love to share them here. If, if not, maybe we can find out how to get in touch with his son. It shouldn't be too hard. That's what we were, yeah. Tracy uh, was talking about doing that, trying to get a hold of the son and maybe having him on the show with us. Right. His name, his last name is McCabe. I can't remember his person. He lived in he lived in Bell Harbor by us in East Park, you know. So that's like a little Irish neighborhood, you know. Right. And, uh, little Irish neighborhood. Okay, I can talk to those guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll just put on this side of my face. <laughs> so you know, I told the truth. I said, I said I told him, I said, listen, even if there's something bad about your father. I more than likely wouldn't say nothing, but there was nothing bad that I knew except that he was maybe it was the kid that's Kenny Jr. Maybe it was the Kenny McCabe Jr. He might have been. He might have been. We'll look. We'll look. Uh, we'll find out. And that was way way around, you know. So okay, how about we talk about one more cop story? The IAD story when uh, you got in some chase and you, you you fucked up some guy's car. So there you have it, part two, right? A nice story. You know, the kid uh, writes a letter to Pete in the prison. Pete writes back and tells what a good cop his father was. And, and of all things, Pete's son and Kenny McCabe's son became friends, and that's how uh, they uh, figured out to send uh, Pete a letter in prison. Anyway, life is small, but I believe Kenny McCabe was a good cop, and I still believe Joe Wendling was not. Joe, you're welcome to come on the show and dispute those facts. Just, uh, you know, come on, and we'll talk about it, right? Uh, but right now, all I have is, you know, some crazy stories you told uh, about Nino and, and Kenny McCabe, which I don't believe. Uh, and then, and not many people believe it either, Joe. Uh, and then the story of what you did with Pete and what Roy got him out of town so you wouldn't kill him. So come tell me something different and I'll listen. But until then, I just think you're a crooked cop.